Hi, and welcome to lesson 18.1, which is about solving equations with variables on both sides. So how do you, how can you represent and solve equations with variables on both sides of the equal sign? That's our essential question. We're going to start with this explore activity, and we're going to model an equation with variables on both sides. And just as our note here, when you see that, that's positive one, that counts as a negative one. And that is a, one of those zero pairs. And this represents this long rectangle it represents x. So using algebra tiles, we have x plus 5. So this is x plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And uh, this means equals. And on the other side, 3x minus 1. 3x and a negative 1. So we, we model that. OK, remember, 3x minus 1. Same thing as 3x plus a negative 1. All right. Now, our whole goal here is to figure out, well, what is the value of one of these x's? So what we can do is we can remove uh, the one from each side. And you, what you do to one side, you have to do the other side to maintain the balance. So OK, we remove one from each side. And then what we can do is we can place a positive one tile on both sides. So if we add a one here, we have to add a one there. So that's what was done right there. There was a, a positive one added there and a positive one added there. So still doing this exact same thing on both sides of the equal sign. But now this counts as a zero pair, and that is zero. Great. That's eliminated. And all along the way, we're trying to figure out, again, what is the value of one of these? Well, what we can do is we can, uh, we can divide it then. This uh, equates to 3, and this x equates to 3. That means one of the x's is equal to three positives. And here, we see it. the solution is x equals three. How can you check the solution to this equation using algebra tiles? Well, in the original model, replace each x tile with three positive one tiles. Remove any zero pairs and see if the equation balances. So what they're talking about is if we go into the original equation here, if x is three, maybe I can just show you I'm going to divide this into three equal parts so one x is equal to an x is equal to one two three see that I just kinda did a little trickery right there now if I split each of these and I say each x represents three then I have one two three four five six seven eight there's a value of eight on the left hand side and then on the other side, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But this one and this one count as a zero pair. So really, I have 8 on the right-hand side. And so that shows you that, well, there you go. 8 is equal to 8. Or, <laughs> yeah, of course, 8 equals 8. It shows you that the value of x is 3 is the solution to the equation. OK. Solving an equation with a variable on both sides. Equations with variables on both sides can be used to compare costs of real world situations. To solve these equations, use inverse operations to get the variable terms on one side of the equation. OK, that's key right there. In this uh, example, Annie's rental car charges an initial fee of $20 plus an additional $30 per day to rent a car. Buddy's rental car cha uh, charges an initial fee of $36 plus an additional $28 per day. For what number of days is the total cost charged by the companies the same? Write an expression representing the total cost of renting a car for Andy's car rental. Well, the initial fee means you got to start in with paying 20 bucks and then you have $30 each day that you uh, 30 yeah, $30 each day that you rent the car. And for Buddy's rental car, you start with an initial fee 36 bucks, and then each day you pay $28. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set both of these expressions equal to each other to find out when is the value going to be the same. And x represents the number of days. So really, we're going to find out how many days is it going to take for them to charge the same amount of money. Now, when we're doing this, we want the variables, as it's mentioned here, uh, you, you have to use inverse operations to get the variable terms on one side of the equal sign. So, or one side of the equation. So, we could sub, 
well, it looks like we are going to subtract 28. What that does is it eliminates the variables on the right-hand side of the equal sign, and it collects them all on the left-hand side of the equal sign. 30 minus 28 is 2. Now we have a two-step equation where we have to subtract 20 from both sides. 36 minus 20 is 16. Divide both sides by 2. Yeah, it's 8. So you've solved the equations just like this before. Starting from this point, we're just adding on an additional layer to it. So the total cost is the same if the rental is for eight days. Next, we have this. A water tank holds 256 gallons, but is leaking at a rate of three gallons per week. A second water tank holds 384 gallons, but is leaking at a rate of five gallons per week. After how many weeks will the amount of water in the two tanks be the same? I made two different expressions and set them equal to each other. 256 gallons leaking at a uh, rate of 3 gallons per week. That means it starts at 256 gallons and you have to subtract uh, 3 gallons per week. So x is the number of weeks. And then the other one starts at 384 and it subtracts 5 gallons per week. It's leaking out. It's releasing that. What I decided to do is I I didn't collect the variable terms on one side quite yet. I, for some reason, decided to move the uh, 256. I subtracted this from both sides. But I very well could have added 5x to both sides here. And I probably should have done that first. As long as you're getting the constants on one side and the variable terms on the other side. That, that's what really matters. See, in the end, I have my variable on one side and my constant on the other side. I added 5x. This ends up being 2x. I subtracted 256, and I get 128. So I end up with 2x equals 128 divided by 2. That means 64 weeks is when the uh, water in the two tanks will be the same. Okay, you're going to now go the other direction, write a real-world situation f starting with an equation. As shown in example one, an equation with variable on both sides, with the variable on both sides, can be used to represent a real-world situation. You can reserve this process, uh, reverse this process by writing a real-world real-world situation for a given equation. So, write a real-world situation that could be modeled by the equation blah 150 plus 25x equals 55x. Our first step, uh, the left side of the equation consists of a constant, that's the constant, plus a variable term, okay? It could represent the total cost for doing a job where there's an initial fee and an hourly charge, okay? The right side of the equation consists of a variable term, right there. It could represent the cost for doing the same job based on an hourly charge only. All right. The equation 150 plus 25x equals 55x would be represented by this situation. A handyman charges $150 plus $25 per hour for house painting. A painter, another painter, charges $55 per hour. There's $55 per hour. How many hours would a job have to take for a handyman's fee and a painter's fee to be the same? Okay, write a real-world situation that can be modeled by the equation 30x equals 48 plus 22x. In this one, I have a, a tennis club charges $30 per person. That's right there for tennis, to play tennis. Another club charges an annual fee. So you, that's like an initial fee. You have to pay that annual fee one time a year first, plus $22 per session. After how many sessions is the cost of the two clubs the same? So that's what you have to know about solving equations with variables on both sides and writing real world uh, uh, problems starting with the equation as well. Thanks for watching.